So these are the little tins that I've picked up to form the basis of this antenna for the reflector and uh, I picked these up from a local shop here in the UK called The Range and I picked up four of these for £2 each so they're not very expensive at all. So as for the measurements then they have a uh, diameter of around 8.5 centimetres and they're around 2 centimetres deep so they're near enough perfect for our use for a uh, 5.8 gigahertz backfire antenna. Now to make things a little bit easier just like in the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version I've made this template here these are for the two parasitic elements but uh, what I'm going to do first is cut the larger one out stick it to the underside of this tin and that will give us a uh, guide to help drill the holes in the uh, correct positions in the centre of the tin and to either side. Now even if you don't manage to find a tin the exact same size as this the template I've made uh, will help you just to get the uh, position of the holes here to drill through the centre because it's a lot easier to uh, centre a larger circle inside something like this than it would be to say try and uh, centre a small circle like this in the middle so it's much easier to line up to get your uh, drilling holes in the correct place. So I've got the three holes drilled in the tin and I used a three millimeter drill bit to drill those holes out but uh, I'm going to be using uh, more standard coax for this build rather than the uh, semi-rigid coax but I'm going to use the same method of using the uh, tubes from one of those uh, telescopic antennas just like I did in the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version but uh, this time I'm going to use some 4mm tubing from one of those telescopic antennas it, the uh, uh, flexible traditional coax fits in there quite nicely but I'm going to have to make this hole a little bit bigger so we can insert this because this is going to be our balance so we're going to solder it directly to the back of this reflector and to make that hole just a little bit bigger I'm just going to use the uh, Dremel here with this grounding tool on the end so next I'm going to make the ballon for this little antenna. So I've got this uh, tube in here, it's uh, 4 millimeters in diameter as I said and I've cleaned it up on the outside just to make it easier to solder it in place when we've finished and we've cut it to the correct length. But I'm going to cut the slit in the ballon first. Now I've marked off the length of the slit here at 12.9 millimeters, and that's the quarter wavelength that I'm working on. And uh, on the 2.4 GHz version I left a millimetre gap from the edge of the tube in here and that's where I started the uh, slit, the slot in the uh, ballon on that version. But I've since read that you don't have to do that and it's probably a little bit better, uh, perform a little bit better if you don't. So I'm going to cut my slit starting at the top edge here all the way down to the bottom with this black mark and just using a uh, cutting wheel on the Dremel. So you need to prepare your coax just like I have done here. Uh, the outer braid, I've cut away a large amount of it. I've uh, got a few strands here to make a connection here for the uh, uh, element when I solder it in place. And I've got a small amount round here that I'm going to use to solder directly onto the ballon. And I've got the center signal wire here left uh, a little bit of that dielectric on there just as an isolation so we don't short it out onto the outer braid here and that's going to be bent over into this t-shape with this here so we can solder our elements directly onto that but uh, it's this small amount here that I've left in place that I'm going to tuck into the tube of the ballon and flood a little bit of solder on there so we've got a good connection with the ballon and ultimately the uh, back reflector as well so this is the ballon ready to be soldered onto the uh, coax and uh, this is the slot here which is a quarter wavelength at 12.9 uh, millimeters and I cut off the tube in here leaving myself five millimeters from here to the uh, start of the slot here because I'm going to be soldering this directly onto the reflector just where this slot starts and I'll have about uh, four millimeters when you take away the uh, actual tin is probably about one millimeter thick uh, sticking out of the back here and I'll flood solder from the uh, underside to uh, do a more permanent connection with this ballon but I'm just going to flood some solder in the top here so we've got it directly connected to the ballon now with the coax. 
So this is a close up of the soldering job, now it's complete, I've got that outer braid soldered onto the balance so it's making contact with that tube in there and uh, the uh, signal wire, the centre connector of the coax and the rest of the outer braid have made into this T shape so we can solder our elements into uh, position here and just here. So what I'm going to do now is a little bit of tin around the base here and then solder this onto the back reflector. And something else to note as well, just prior to your soldering the ballant in place onto the reflector, make sure that you have your T-shape for your driven elements opposite these two holes here like I have here because these two holes are going to be the uh, supports for the uh, parasitic element and if you don't have them opposite like this you'll have your uh, driven elements if you like in the way of these two uh, standoffs here so make sure you've got it just like I have here. So that's the balance soldered in place so to finish it off I'm going to get a little bit of heat shrink tubing put it over the top of the uh, end of the tube in there and on the coax and you want that little uh, bit of five millimeters sticking out there purely because of uh, strain relief if you don't have that then you will end up uh, working the coax loose with this more flexible coax not so much of a problem with the semi-rigid stuff but uh, if you're going to use this kind of coax you want that little extra bit there to add uh, some strain relief so that's the back finished off and I also wanted to show you that I got the Dremel tool to just ground flat the area around these holes here so if I had any excessive solder on there I've just ground it away and the reason I've done that is because I'm going to be attaching those uh, nylon spacers onto the uh, back here and I'm going to be attaching them with some uh, little uh, nylon nuts so I just wanted a nice flat surface for those nuts so it all lays nice and flush. So next we're going to make the uh, driven elements for this antenna and the copper wire that I'm using is 1.5 millimeters in diameter. Now the two measurements that we're going to be working with to create one of these driven elements is uh, the longest leg is 12.9 millimeters long and the shortest leg is 11 millimeters long. Now because these are such small measurements to do with something like a ruler the uh, best way to do this and get it uh, accurate and also repeatable is to use the straw method that I've shown in previous videos. Now if you haven't seen this in any of my previous videos you just take yourself a length of straw or uh, this is a little bit uh, smaller than straw the diameter is a little bit narrower this is some plastic rod off uh, those uh, balloon sticks you can purchase off eBay pretty cheaply and uh, cut down two pieces of straw one at uh, the 11 millimeters that you need and the second one at 12.9 millimeters and if you do this then you don't have to uh, keep measuring the lengths of the uh, driven elements over and over again you can even save these and use them in uh, future builds if you want to it just uh, makes it a little bit more precise and uh, you know you're not uh, prone to making errors in your measurements then by using one of these so in order to make your elements using the uh, straw as a measuring tool what you want to do you just want to estimate where you're going to put your uh, right angle bend in here to achieve that uh, uh, dog leg approach if you like to these elements so just uh, guesstimate slightly longer than uh, 12.9 millimeters there on this length and then put a right angle bend in there and then what you can do is take your longest one your 12.9 millimeters put that over the top of there then come in with your side cutters put that up to the edge of the straw and then cut that off and then you know that this leg here is exactly 12.9 millimeters then what you can do is get uh, your shorter one feed that over the top of the copper wire and do exactly the same again butt it up to that right angle bend there and come in with your side cutters and snip that off and that way you've got this one exactly 12.9 millimeters and the short one exactly at 11 millimeters so you want to lead off with the signal wire first just like in the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version of this and I'm leading off with the longest leg first as well if you lead off with the longest leg first and you go long short and then long short you'll have a left hand circular polarized antenna so I am making this antenna left hand circular polarized 
If you want right hand circular polarised you just do the opposite and lead off with the shortest leg first so you go short, long, short, long. But uh, I'm going to make this left hand circular polarised and uh, I've already prepared and cut the uh, signal wire down here. I've already pre-tinned the element here in the uh, centre of the uh, bend there and I'm just going to solder that into position with a little bit of solder on there because everything's already pre-tinned. A little bit of solder and a little bit of heat and we should get a good connection there. So now that both those elements are soldered in place, to uh, add a little bit more strength and to also protect them from coming into contact with each other, use a little bit of a uh, epoxy putty and work it in between there and around to add a little bit of strength. You could also use some hot glue or something like that. And a little tip when using this uh, epoxy putty, you can get a really nice finish by uh, moulding it around and then using something like uh, this uh, rubber on the end of the pencil dip it into some uh, isopropanol alcohol and then you can uh, mould it and get it nice and smooth and uh, you get a much neater job and finish to it if you use some isopropanol and uh, the rubber on the end of a pencil. So while the epoxy putty is drying you can move on to make the uh, two parasitic discs for this antenna. So uh, I've got the two uh, templates glued onto a piece of copper plate here. You can use uh, tin or something else, mild steel quite thin and easy to work with. Uh, this copper plate is quite thin, you can use some tin snips to cut it out. If you use tin, uh, top of a baked bean can for instance, you can use scissors to cut it out, but just be careful because the edges can get a little bit sharp. But uh, what I'm going to do before I cut these out is uh, drill the holes first because it's a lot easier to do that while you've got something uh, quite large to hold on to while you drill the uh, holes in here. If you cut it out and then try to uh, drill the holes it can be a little bit fiddly. So I've got the parasitic elements cut out and I'm just finishing them off on the uh, sanding drum with the uh, Dremel here. But it occurred to me that because this is uh, 20 uh, millimeters in diameter and the smaller one is 12 millimeters in diameter I could probably find some uh, washers that I could use instead of uh, cutting them out of tin or a copper plate like this it might be a little bit easier to buy some washers and just drill the two opposing holes in the washer there for the larger one and the smaller one should already have the hole through the uh, middle of the washer but um, I'm not sure I'll have to have a look on eBay but uh, as I say you could probably get away with that. So to support and space out the two parasitic discs that I've made I'm going to use these nylon spacers. Now I've got two nylon spacers here at 15 millimeters long and that's going to take it up to the height of the uh, main driven element there and uh, then I've got two nylon spacers at 20 millimeters long and that's going to support the uh, first parasitic disc here the larger one so the this parasitic disc is going to be 20 millimeters above the main driven element and then to support the smaller one i've got another length of nylon spacer here that again is 20 millimeters long and that's going to support the uh, top smaller one here and then i've got various uh, nylon uh, nuts here to attach the disc to because I don't want to use metal ones and uh, then you know it kind of mess things up a little bit but um, I've got metal ones to, to secure it directly onto the uh, reflector itself so it's nice and strong and then I've got nylon ones to support the rest. So I've got the two 15mm spacers in position so now I'm just going to screw the 20mm spacers on top of those. So I'm now going to attach the first parasitic element onto these two spacers here using these two black nylon screws but I've already attached the uh, third spacer that's going to space out the uh, smaller uh, parasitic element at the end already onto this spacer here so I can now attach that directly on top there. And then finally attach the small parasitic element to the end of that spacer. So that's the backfire antenna for 5.8 gigahertz actually finished now but what I'm going to do is break all this back down again, remove this because uh, I don't want to paint the nylon spacers 
and I don't want to particularly paint the uh, copper discs either I'm going to leave them as they are but I'm going to put some paint in this part of the antenna just to tidy it up a little bit so here's the uh, finished antenna now that it's got its paint on I don't think it looks too bad at all I've also put a uh, little right angle bend on here and tapped it out so I can attach it to a uh, tripod because we've got the flexible coax on here but uh, as the uh, majority of my subscribers know I don't actually fly quadcopters so it's a bit difficult for me to test this so I thought I'd set up the uh, network analyzer and just show you the uh, VSWR just to get a rough idea how well this will perform so this is the basic setup then to test the VSWR on the little backfire antenna just got the sweeper running 5 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz I've got the RF coming out there and I've also got a detector at the uh, RF side just to give us a reference level comes along here it comes into this uh, isolator here which uh, will only allow the RF to flow in one way um, don't actually need that but it does make for a good support for the rest of the rig directional coupler here so I've got my uh, second my main detector here measuring the uh, reflected power back from the little backfire antenna which will give us a good indication of the VSWR so the VSWR then is uh, extremely low it's 1.004 keeps uh, fluctuating a little bit there but that prob is probably more to do with the uh, setup that I've got here the uh, reflections here in the lab it's not under the best conditions to do something like this but uh, to get a good idea it's uh, good enough but uh, the uh, scale here that we've got, we've got 5 gigahertz here, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, etc., all the way up to 6 here. So this is 5.8 around this mark here, so 5.8 here, around here, and we've got that nice little dip there, right where we want it. If I was a uh, perfectionist, I'd probably want this little uh, V shape a little bit this way rather than that way, but. Um, you know for an antenna that we make by hand it's uh, not turned out too bad at all to get it uh, any more accurate than this you're going to have to use PCBs and etch it to really get it spot on but we've got this uh, second harmonic just here this little dip which is uh, one two three four five between uh, five and six gigahertz there and then you've got the main one which is the one we're after the one in the uh, 5.8 gigahertz region so got a nice wide dip there with a nice low VSWR. So just by uh, looking at this as a uh, first build this antenna is going to perform really really well with that low VSWR it's going to have very little reflection it's going to make most of the RF that you do pump into it and it's definitely working on the frequency that we actually want so not too bad at all. So not too bad for a uh, first build then, I mean that uh, VSWR there, you can sometimes be prototyping an antenna and pulling your hair out for months on end trying to get uh, the VSWR as low as you can get it but um, to actually move the uh, response more into the uh, 5.8 gigahertz region where you actually want it, you're talking, uh, you're not even talking half a millimetre being shaved off of these elements you're talking a uh, quarter of a millimeter, millimeter and an eighth of a millimeter and that's just something you can't do with hand tools alone so the uh, next stage to take this to is to uh, etch it onto PCBs and uh, if you watch the video all the way to the end you'll see a bit of a spoiler for the uh, next version of this antenna that I've uh, got coming up so it'll be a nice test to see who actually watches my videos all the way to the end but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did please uh, give it a thumbs up any questions comments on uh, things I can do to try and improve this uh, more than welcome and hopefully you'll join me on the next one